and on Tuesday, we talked about Delilah um, from the story of Samson and Delilah. And today, I am going to be talking about Jezebel. If you do not know the story of Jezebel, then, um, hello, Miss Franklin. How are you? Thank you so much. Queen Bling Jewelry. I'll have to post her link for you guys to, to do it. Five dollar jewelry, you guys. I'm, I'm I don't spend a lot of money on my jewelry at all. Um, but I'm talking about Jezebel tonight, and I hope and pray that everyone that hears this message tonight that you are convicted on some things in your heart, especially especially wives and some of my single ladies too. I'll be talking about some things about you guys too. But this message is going to be one that kind of really makes you think. Some of you may be upset with me about with this message and some of you may be like, okay, Atiyah, it's this one of these messages where you just been on our on our necks. So, um, I just want and, and the reason why I say that is because when I was getting ready for this message, there was a lot of things that God was even convicting me myself that things that I haven't been doing correctly. So that's how I know that this message is going to be one of those messages that's going to really um, get to you and convict some things in your heart. Because Jezebel in the Bible, you know, she did some, like I said, some really bad things. You know, she turned the king of Israel over from uh, away from God forcing um allowing forcing the children of Israel to serve God a God that was not God so she did some really bad things and a lot of ladies don't realize it but you have some Jezebel in you and that's why I believe God put it on my heart to speak about lessons from Jezebel because a lot of say, ladies be like nah Tiger I'm not like that but the message that God has given for me to give you guys tonight, you may look at it and be like, okay, maybe I may have some of some of her characteristics in me and I may need to work, work on them. No, you didn't murder nobody. No, you didn't do all of this, you know, something terrible like that. But you got to understand that with God, sin is sin. So it does not matter if you steal, it does not matter if you kill, it does not matter if you cheat, it does not matter if you lie. To God, all sin is equal sin. So to you, you may be like, well, I'm not a murderer. I haven't I haven't took anyone's life. Okay, well, in the guise of in the eyes of God, even if you haven't took anyone's life, if you've stolen something, if you cheated, if you've um if you um false witnessed witchcraft anything like that you have sinned against god and you and you you need to you need we need to talk about that tonight so jezebel jezebel the story of jezebel is um you're going to find the story of jezebel in first Kings. so if you guys get a chance to go read it like i i don't hardly tell you guys the whole story about the the whole person but i always tell you where to go find them so that way you can go read it yourself you have your own bible study but let me tell you the background story of jezebel so jezebel was a theologian queen a uh, princess and she married the israelite uh king ahab okay so that right there was not was not right because uh, the Philosians did not sell, they did not serve God. They were not people of God. So he married someone that was not a person of God that served uh, a God, Baal, that, that was not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God Almighty. She served this God, Baal. Okay, so when she became queen, instead of confining to the ways of the children of Israel and to the living God, she forced the she forced the children of Israel. She even forced her husband because he was just he didn't have no backbone. She even got him to start serving a, a Baal, a God that is not our of God. So that's idolatry. When you serve some a God that is not God, when you put anything before God, that is idolatry. So she was in the sin of idolatry. And she forced her husband and even wanted the children of Israel to do it. It even got to a point where she even killed some of the prophets, killed the prophets of the of of the Israelites because she was so um 
upset. She was so, her ego, all types of things. So that's why I say tonight is going to be a night where you're going to get some conviction when it comes to you as a woman. Look at yourself tonight and ask yourself, do I have some Jezebel in me? If you have some Jezebel in you, you need to be uh, praying tonight and asking God to forgive you from the, from the stuff that you have done, okay? So tonight I am going to give you four lessons from Jezebel. I think it's four. Is it four? Okay, sorry. Yes, four lessons from Jezebel, okay? And what I want to start doing before I start my lessons, and I do want to give... God glory. And I want to say a prayer before I start. So guys, I'm going to say a little prayer before I start. We're going to continue saying our prayer at the end, but I need to, we need to always invite God into the atmosphere, invite God into the service, invite God to take over. So I want to start before I say my messages, just uh, give God just a gratitude and thankfulness. And then at the end, we will do the same thing. So that's something that I will be changing with wife power. We're going to say a little prayer before we start. So Heavenly Father, I just come right now. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, I just ask right now that you empty me and you come into this atmosphere, Lord. I ask that whatever you have to say to your people, you say it to them, Lord. Lord, I cannot do this without you, but I thank you for the opportunity to speak to them. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. So we are talking about Miss Jezebel tonight, okay? Jezebel, all right? She, this lady here, you know, she was manipulative. She was a murder, murderer. Um, she, she just, she was conniving. She was just, she was something, okay? So tonight's lessons will be specifically about this lady, Jezebel, okay? Starting number one. Your number one lesson from Jezebel is beware of the sin of idolatry. That's number one. Beware of the sin of idolatry. Because it says that when Ahab married Jezebel, that's 1 Kings 16 and 33, when he married Jezebel, she served Baal and worshiped him. Okay? So you got to so she was not serving God. Now, most of you, okay, most of us don't have a statue of Baal in our prayer closet or we don't have a statue in our house. You would never have anything like that. But you got to understand that idolatry is anything that you put above your relationship with God. This can be a man, marriage, car, job, anything, money, anything, your children, anything, anything that God blesses you with can become an idol. Anything. Now, just because you are not bowing down on your knees to your husband, to your kids, to, uh, to an, uh, a golden statue does not mean you are not in the, the sin of idolatry. Anytime you put anything before God, you are in the sin of idolatry. Anytime you put anybody's, you said you believe that anybody else will make you happier. Anything, anytime you think that you need people, anytime you think that you need things more than you need God, you are in the sign, the sin of idolatry. So you can't talk about Jezebel. Because she's serving Baal, but you serving your car. You, when you, before you got the new car, you was in the church. You was praising God. You was serving God. You was doing everything that God told you to do. But then when you got the car, you forgot about God. You don't want to take nobody to church. You don't want to stop and help nobody. You don't want to go pick up your mama. You don't want to go pick up your sister. You too good to go pick up anybody. Before you had a man, you was on your knees fasting and praying, asking God, Lord, please bless me with my bow ass. Now you got a man and you can't even raise your, your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. He, every time the man act up, you can't tell God, thank you. you just because your husband don't want to be with you, your life is over. But you forget that you had God before you had the man. You are in idolatry. I told you tonight message is not going to make y'all feel good. It's going to convict you on some things. Colossians 3 and 5 says, 
put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immortality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, greed, which is all idolatry. You have to understand it is possible for people to not be married and still be in the will of God. You're going to have to have some discipline. You can't be sleeping around with everybody. But if you can't, that's why the word says, if you can't control yourself, you need to get married. But there are people who even use sex as a way to help them feel better. So you get in the vibe like, okay, well, as long as I got all these women or I got all these men, I'm good. No. What's, you missing something. That's why you think you need all of these, these people. Because you missing something. Idolatry. 1 Samuel 15 and 23 says, Idolatry and iniquity are parallel to stubbornness. Just as the sin of witchcraft, which deemed rebellion. You can't talk about Jezebel if you are putting things before God. You can't talk about Jezebel if you are serving men, cars, money, bags, shoes, clothes. You can't talk about her. Because you are in idolatry as well. When one rejects the word of God, the person also rejects his place of authority to fully guide every walk of their life. When you reject the word of God. So there are times where I will post things. And people will say, that ain't, that ain't it. That's wrong. That, that, that's not what the words say. And then they tell them, give me all this stuff. But, you, but, but at the end of the day, the word is truth. So you can reject it if you want to. But you are also rejecting God's place of authority in your life. And the Bible says that rebellion is the same as witchcraft. So don't talk about Jezebel if you're not doing what God has told you to do because you are in the sin of idolatry. Let me keep going. Those, there are women, and y'all see me post it earlier. I'm going to pull it up because I was talking about single ladies who are, you're not even married. But you already are in idolatry of marriage. And you, 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 you pray every day asking God to send you a man. You done fasted. You done prayed. You be on every hotline, prayer call. The bishop call you. You there. You doing everything for God to get you a man. But what about God? Why don't you just do it because you love God? Why don't you get on your knees and thank him because he's God? Not because he's going to give you a man, but because he's God. Because if you don't get on your knees before you have the man, when God give you the man, you're going to forget about him. So that's why God ain't gave you the man yet. Because he knows your heart. He knows you want that more than you want him. So he ain't going to give it to you. He a jealous God. He jealous. He know the signs of a single woman that is in idolatry. You lose your enjoyment of life. You can't have, you ain't got no friends. You, you, you don't go nowhere. You don't do nothing. You just say, Lord, I don't have no life until you give me my bow ass. I don't have nothing, Jesus. I don't have nothing to live for, Lord. My, my life, I don't, nothing, God, until you give me a man. That's when my life's going to start. That's when I'm going to have fun. That's when I'm going to travel. That's when I'm going to go to brunch. That's when I'm going to do things. That's when I'm going to serve you, God, when you give me my man. Your relationship revolves around God. I mean, revolves around 
your relationship with God revolves around the man. Like I told you, a lot of ladies, they be, they be on a prayer call. They be on everything. I mean, they are on point when it comes to God. When, but as long as they, God gives them what they want. But as soon as God don't give you what you want, you angry, you're frustrated, you mad, you think he's stingy, you think he don't care about you, you don't want me to be married, you don't want me to be happy. But that's not what God is thinking. God knows that if I give you what you want, you may give that person a little too much of yourself because you're neglecting me. And I need to make sure that you know me before I give you somebody else. Because when you get in a marriage, trust me, you're going to need God. You're going to need him. And if you don't have him, you're going to find him real quick when you get in one. So I, all my single ladies, stop worrying about a Boaz and get you on your knees and learn how to pray. Learn how to fast. Learn how to cry out to God. Learn how to get on your knees. Learn how to find your worship stuff. That's because you're going to need that in a marriage. Stop worrying about the man. You get disappointed every time the, the, the man don't... There's some ladies, but every time they get in a relationship with somebody, if he don't propose, they angry. Lord, I thought he was the one. I thought you was going to give me. I thought he was the one for me, Lord. You bitter. You mad. And Lord, somebody, that, that, that's not him. He, you too desperate. You too desperate, child. I got something for you, but you won't slow down. You won't come to me first. You won't pray with me. You won't spend time with me so I can send you to the right person. See, Bo, see Ruth was sent to Boaz. Okay? Boaz, you got to understand, stop, stop, stop chasing men and be found. Let the man find you. Stop chasing them. But if you're so desperate to be in a marriage, you will chase. You'll be out of whack. You'll forget the word of God, what it says. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor in the Lord. He who finds a wife finds a wife. So if you are out of whack with your relationship with God, ladies, single ladies, if you're not serving God like you're supposed to, if you're not strong with God, you're going to be desperate to find completion inside of a man. You're going to think, well, if I got a man, if I get a man, I'm going to be okay. But that's wrong. I'm here to tell you that is wrong. Your faith, your trust, your everything needs to be in God, not a man. Let's keep going. It is all about your heart, ladies, all about your heart. Women that are married and single ladies, it's about your heart. You can't see inside your heart, but God can. Your husband can't see inside your heart, but God can. The pastor, every, they can't see that. They don't have an x-ray to your heart. God does. And God is a God that looks at her, her, her heart. Is your heart leaning towards something else other than God. Ask yourself this. Is my heart leaning towards something else other than God? Am I seeking every day to get God, to get closer to God, to understand what God purpose is in my life? Or am I steady asking God every day for a man or, or money or success or businesses? Or am I asking God for him? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then think everything will be added on to you. you but you got to seek God first. Many of you want the prizes first. You want to go out there, find a the man and bring him to God and say, Lord, this is who I want. Fix him. And that ain't how it works. God looks at your heart and sees what's going on in your heart. Even when outward, acti outward activities may not point to all this idolatry. And I said that earlier. Many of you will be like, I tell you, I'm not in idolatry. I don't be serving no other gods. If you haven't, if there's any reason, let me, I'm going to give you a sign of idolatry. Before you got married, you was going to church. You was going to church. You was in the, in, I mean, every Sunday, and you was in the front row, ready. 
But as soon as you get married, you stop going to church. As soon as you start having children, you forget about God. And you forget that God blessed you to be able to get that marriage. God blessed you to be able to birth children. But Lord, I'm tired tonight. My child kept me up all night long. But you, but you don't, you forget that if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a child that kept you up all night long. We forget God so easy. When we get what we want. So you got to be careful with the sin of idolatry. Yo, the devil is shy. It's sly. He's slick, y'all. He's slick. He knows you're not going to bow down to no images. He knows you're not going to bow down to no golden gods. He's too smart for y'all. And we got we to gotta get smarter. How the enemy gets you is he draws you in with idols on the heart level. He slick. He know your husband, you love your husband. He know that your husband has a key to your heart. So anytime he wants you to stop doing what God tells you to do, he go, he go act, make your husband act up. The devil knows that you have made your mate an idol in your life. The devil knows you've made your house, you've made your children, you've made your car. He knows those things are an idol in your life. So he's going to keep hitting it, keep hitting it, keep hitting it. Until you finally clear your heart and your mind from that idol. God, if we ain't met together, I'm okay. If I, if I don't have no car, I'm okay. If I'm walking on the bus stop, I'm okay. I'm going to give you praise on Metro. If I got to live in an apartment, I'm okay. But many of you, God blesses you with something and you forget about him. You don't pray to him no more. You don't do nothing. You get a little bullshit. You forget where you came from. Like my mama said, don't forget where you came from. You forget where you came from. You used to you used to have to put tape on your window. Now you got a Mercedes and you don't know how to talk to, talk to nobody. Be careful with idolatry. Men, children, parents, sisters, friends. Anything can become an idol. Be careful. Anything that occupies you obsessively is an idol. My God. You can't get that man out your head. Idol. You can, the, the car keep bothering you. The house keep bothering you. The children keep bothering you. You can't let none of that stuff go. You can't give it to God because you want to hold it on to yourself. Idol. Let it go. God, nothing is worth my relationship with you. Nothing. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21 says, The acts of flesh are obvious. Sexual immortality, impurity, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Fits of anger, selfishness, envy, drunkness. Woo, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom. God sent me here to tell y'all, you have been in the sin of idolatry. And if you don't ask for forgiveness, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Your husband is not your God. If he leaves you, you're going to be okay, baby. If he don't want you, you're going to be fine. Because guess what? You got the king of kings on your side. You got God. So be very careful with idolatry. Be careful. If your car ain't right, man, I had to teach myself 
that if I go outside and the car don't want to start, okay. <laughs> if, if, the, if the children don't want to be right, okay. I had to teach myself these things because I was making these things more. I couldn't even read my Bible right. I couldn't even spend time with God. Right? Have you ever been trying to spend time with God and then all, the devil keep reminding you of all the problems that's going on and the, the car messing up, your husband ain't treating you right, the children in trouble, all these things in your head. You can't focus. You can't focus on what you your time with God. Idolatry. Lord, I need you to clear my mind from these things. These are not worth my relationship with you. I need, I need, I need it to go. Because understand this, the devil is slick. Like I said earlier, he will try to speed you up or he'll try to slow you down. He'll try to dis, he'll try to put all these thoughts, all this craziness in your head. And you got to go to God and say, Lord, I need you to give me your peace. Lord, I need you to give, I need you to, I need you to just convict my mind, my thoughts, Lord. I need you to come in and the devil messing with me again. You need to go get him. He, he, he get him out of my way. I'm trying to spend some time with you, Lord. And trust me, God will come. Number two, told y'all, do not use your good qualities for evil. We talking about Jezebel. Y'all probably said, Ty, I ain't no Jezebel. Let's keep going. Do not use your good qualities for evil. So when you look at Jezebel, we always talk about her, what she did wrong. But you got to also understand that Jezebel had qual good qualities. She just used them for evil. She had qualities. Just like a lot of us have great qualities. We're leaders. We're assertive. We're, 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 we have some really great qualities. But we use them for evil. We're smart. But instead of using our, our, our intelligence to help people, we're using them to manipulate people. She had leadership qualities. But she used them to control her husband. How many of you ladies, you have, you're dominant, you're alpha females, but when you, you, you don't know how to back off when it comes to a, your husband, you try to control him. Well, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. That's what Jezebel, what she, she was a queen. She had leaders. She was a queen, but instead of her. Submitting with submitting with her husband and serving the great I am, she decided that she was going to use her skills to force her, the people to serve her God, to do what she wanted them to do. Listen to me, wise. What she she didn't like what they was doing. You gonna do what I want you to do. I I I don't like what I don't like the stuff that you're doing. So uh, you gonna do what I want you to do. And if you don't do what I want you to do, that's a problem. You get so angry because you don't get what you want. You start doing things, ungodly things. Your pride sets in. You start trying to control. You start trying to manipulate. You start trying to lie. You start trying to do all these crazy things because your ego is messed up. You bruise. You're angry. How dare he? I, this is what I want. You not, he not doing what I want him to do. He not being who I want him to be. That's the problem that's that, that's the, that's the problem because the enemy knows what you're good at the devil knows what we're good at he knows our gifts he knows what you're good at but his goal is to twist it so you won't use it for good you'll use it for bad if you're the type of woman see i'm a bear I, I can talk i know how to talk but if i the, the bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue so as a, as with my mouth, I can even bring I can either bring life to people or I can chop you down with it. I could either do godly things with it or I can do evil with it. There is you have a choice. So many women degrade their husbands so much that your husband don't feel like a man anymore. Yeah, Ahab had no backbone. But Jezebel didn't help either. 
Jezebel didn't help either with Ahab not having no backbone. She took advantage of the fact that she had a weak-minded husband. Oh, he weak. I can do whatever I want. He ain't gonna tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. I got the I wear the pants in this house. He ain't gonna tell me. The kids gonna do whatever they wanna do. He ain't gonna tell me what's gonna go down in this house. And when your husband try to step up and say anything, you chop him down. Chop him down. So a lot of men don't feel like men in their own homes. Because of your mouth. First Peter 4 and 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That's first Peter uh, 4 and 10. Now Ephesians 4 and 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. I want to say that last part again. What is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Let me say that again. According to their needs. Not your needs. Their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. It's important to understand in a marriage what your spouse needs. If you are prideful, if you are the type of woman that don't want to listen, the Bible says that a good wife is a crown to her husband's head, but a bad one is rot. It's like rotten to his bones. You, you break him down. You break him down with your words. Some of them already was broken down when you married them. And then here you come just breaking them down even more. Just breaking him down. He don't have just, just every time you come at him, you like this. You just add him. Just come on. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you can't even, you don't know how to fight right. You like Jezebel. You don't even know how to fight right. Somebody tell you, no, you going you going you going to cut him up. Somebody hurt you. You going to do something to him. Proverbs 4. And 14 and 1, Proverbs 14 and 1, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears it down. Does it say the wise husband builds his house, but with his own hands, foolish hands tears it down? No, it does not say that. It says the wise woman. Woman builds her house. So ladies, you build your house. If he acting up, set boundaries. It ain't going down in that. As for me and my house, sir, we serving the Lord. If you don't like what's going down here, peace and, and grease. But for us in this home, it ain't going down like that. Many of us are scared Christians. The devil got you scared. The devil got you too scared to stand for, up for yourself. You too scared to pray. You too scared to read your Bible. You too scared to turn on a worship song because you're afraid your husband is going to get mad. Tell that demon where it can go. And I'm not talking about your man. I'm talking about the thing that's that rebellious spirit in him that does not want you to serve God in your house. Tell it it can go somewhere and you serve God in your house. You set the tone in your home. You show your children what it's like to serve God, even in hell. 
even with all hell breaking loose around you, you show your kids that you can still get on your knees and lift your hands and call on the name of Jesus. But if you in there arguing with him, fighting with him, doing all this crazy stuff with him, you look like him. God is a God of order and the man is the head. The woman is, like she said, the neck. You are underneath the husband. That does not mean you do not have an opinion. That does not mean that you cannot talk and, and say things around your, that is not, that's not what that means. But what it means is you need to respect the head of the house. Even if the head is not doing what he's supposed to be doing, you go to the head's head. You go to God. Lord, your son acted up again. God, I know you seen the way he was talking to me, but you, did you see me? Lord, did you see me? He was, he was going in, Father. He was going in, but I didn't say nothing, Lord. I didn't say nothing. I was quiet. I kept my peace. You heard my thoughts? I was praying. I wasn't being like him, Lord. I wasn't. So you need to take care of your son because he tripping. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to study or I'm going to do what I'm cook. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. But you need to go and beat your son. And go about your business. But many of you, you argue with him. You fight with him. You do all of that. Stop. Let God handle him. God ain't blind. Number three. Don't use power to do wrong. Woo. Don't use power to do wrong. Jezebel was the queen. She became the queen when she married Ahab. Okay, so she had power. She had influence and she had power. When you become a wife, and you get married, now you have a certain power over your husband's heart. A certain power. So, many of you and there are women who do this. Use that against him. Well, I know I, he loved me. He ain't going nowhere, so I can act any kind of way. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't going to leave me. I can treat him any kind of way. I can keep putting my, I can keep talking about him. I can keep degrading him. He, he loved me. He not going nowhere. You don't think God see, just like your husband is held accountable for how he treats you, you're held accountable for how you treat him. Just like God watches how he handles his power, God is also watching how you handle yours as well. When, when, Jeze, when, when the king wanted the, um, the vineyard, Jezebel was so daggum, uh, uh, she wanted it. She was like, you know what, okay. So what did she do? She did terrible things in order to get it. Okay. She was told no from this man. She wanted his vineyard. And she, they were told no, which like a lot of ladies today, you want something and your man tell you no, or you want something from God and God tells you no, let me, let me go deeper. You want something from God and God say, not right now, wait, you get all angry. What do you mean? Wait, I think I deserve it right now. I should have been married. I should have been a millionaire. I should have been lost this way. I should have been did all of this. He should have been changed. You talking to God like that? You want a God like that? No. Jezebel wrote letters. So she forged her husband. She did forgery, false accusations assassination. She did all kinds of things because she was told no. Now, some of you will be like, Italia, like I said earlier, I tell you, I didn't kill, I didn't kill nobody. I, I, I didn't, I, I ain't, I ain't put my, I ain't put no, my hands on nobody. I ain't forged no letters. I ain't done all of that. So what are you talking about? I'm like, Jay-Z, that's not me, but your mouth. Your mouth can kill a man just as much as your hands can. Emotional abuse is real. 
Verbal abuse is real. And you can kill someone's spirit just by the way you talking to them. You ain't no good. You ain't never going to get no job. You ain't going to never change. You ain't going to never do this. What do you think you're doing to your husband's spirit? What do you think you're, how do you think you're making him, how do you think you, he thinks that you, that's how you feel about him. Now he probably thinks that you think he's no good. You think that he's nothing. And words stick on certain people. A lot of people do not know how to shake words. So you got to understand life and death is in the power of your tongue. It's in your tongue. What you say? I did a segment a while back. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say to your husband. Because you can be tearing him down. And you think, I tell you, I'm just telling him what he needs to do. I tell you, I'm just, he need to get better. There's some things he's slacking on. There's some things he's not doing. Who are you? There's some things you may be slacking on. There's some things you may not be doing. So how dare you keep pointing fingers when you could be, you could, you could fix some things about yourself. See, but that's what idolatry does to a lot of people. They get you, it gets you so fixated on your husband, you're not paying attention to yourself. You're not paying attention to your pride. You're not paying attention to your lying. You're not paying attention to your manipulation. You're not paying attention to nothing that you're doing because you're so focused on him. Well, it's him. My marriage is messed up because of him. Marriage takes two people. So you can't point fingers. And that's what I told you. God looks at the heart. He does not look at what's on the outside. He looks at the heart. So you may think he's a terrible man because he's not doing what you want him to do. But God may see he's a beautiful man. His heart is amazing. He got a great heart, but he just broken right now. Because he didn't wasn't loved the right way. His people didn't treat him right. He just need a little love. He just need a, a, a lot. Just, just all this. He just needs you to rub on him and make him feel good. He ain't never been felt before. He ain't never been touched before. He ain't never been really loved before. But instead of you seeing that, you keep picking at him. You, you ain't nothing. You don't want to talk to me. You don't want to be around me. Learn your man. Why? Is, why is he like that? Go to God and say, Lord, there's something wrong with my husband. Can you help me? Can you give me the wisdom that I need to help your son? Can you give me the wisdom that I need to be the wife that you need me to be for him so I can help him step into his purpose? I don't want to be out of your will, God. I don't want to, I don't want to be in flesh. I don't want to be in myself. I want to, I want you to move through me so that I can help my husband. Like first Peter three and one says through your actions, your unsaved spouse can be saved, but it's got to be through your actions. God's got to be able to work through you. If you are looking like the fool, he can't work through you. If you arguing, you prideful, you unforgiving, you doing all this stuff. Why do you think God wants you to forgive him? So God can use you. He can't use you if you got all that unforgiveness on the inside of you. You got all that pride. God can't use you. So he needs you. You got to ask God to come in and clean all that out of you. So that way God can create a new heart, new mind, new ears, new, new sight, new everything for you. So that way you can be the person that God needs you to be and you can do your assignment. Your marriage is your first ministry. But if you don't let God use you, how in the world are you going to ask God to give you the thousands and you can't even talk to the one? Jesus went back for the one. So you can't help the one. You, you want a whole ministry. You want a church. You want all this going on. You want everything. God bless my ministry. But you can't reach the one in your house.
Chivalry starts at home. That is one thing my marriage has taught me. See, I married, my husband was not raised. My husband was raised Catholic. So when I married him, I was young. I was 17 when I married him. I was young. I didn't know what was going on, but I was in love. <laughs> but when I married him, it took us, it, we struggled. We still somewhat have some struggles with it. But God, I have, what the thing is, I've moved out the way. I kept trying to push things, kept pushing. You need to do this. You need to do that. This how you need to be. I was this, 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 and God couldn't use me. All I was doing was pushing him away from me, pushing him away from God. Why do I want to serve God when a woman that served God look like a fool? You yelling at me, screaming at me, telling me how I'm wrong, how I don't, how I ain't this, how I ain't that. But you say you serve God and you want me to serve the God that you serve? I uh-uh, uh-uh. Many of you have men, husbands that are not serving God. They are struggling. That they, they, are, they are lost in their faith or their babies in their faith. And God wants to help. God wants to move. God wants to work. But he can't do it because you all in the way. You like the matrix. All in the way. Get out of God's way. Do what you're supposed to do. Show peace. Show kindness. Show self-control. Get you a life. Because under this is how I know when a woman is in idolatry. I'm going to give y'all many times, ladies, when I talk to ladies, I can automatically tell when if you're in idolatry because of how you speak about your husband compared to God. All ladies do it. Well, tell you, my husband doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. He doesn't spend time with me. He doesn't make me feel good. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do this. And the one thing I ask is, what do you do for yourself? What do you do for yourself? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you know that even though, even if your husband doesn't want to talk to you, you can go talk to God? When you're so fixated on your husband completing you, when you're so fixated on the fact that if your husband doesn't talk to you or he's not around you or if he don't be around you, you're worthless, that's idolatry. If your man want to go outside and be with his friends, you go in the room and watch you a movie. If your husband want to go for a weekend with his homeboys and he don't never go out nowhere and he finally get a, vac a weekend to go fishing, let that man go fishing and you set up a nice appointment with you and your friends. If your husband is constantly dependent on his mom, then that's probably how he's been his whole life. He's dependent on mom. And he has an issue to where he cannot leave and cleave. If he is dependent on his mom, you need to have a conversation with him. Let him know how it makes you feel. Don't attack him. Make it more about how, the, how it makes you feel. Set boundaries with him. Set boundaries with the mother. Pray to God and move forward. But you got to have consequences behind your boundaries. Ladies, let me tell y'all all the time. Y'all can talk to your husband all day about boundaries. If you cheat on me again, I'm going to leave you. If, you. if you scream at me again, you're not going to scream at me. You're not going to treat me like this. But you ain't got no consequences behind it. You, you sound like if your two-year-old throw themselves on the floor and you just sitting there looking at him instead of telling him to get up. If there's no consequences behind your boundaries, they're not going to believe that you, that you respect yourself. They gonna keep cheating on you. They gonna keep talking to you crazy. They gonna keep doing all these things to you because you are not setting, you are not setting uh, bound consequences behind your boundaries. If you tell that man, look, you cheat on me again, I'ma leave you. You better have. I have. I soon as I hit, soon as he show anything, I my bags is at the door and I'm gone. That's a boundary with a consequence. Let me get back to Jezebel. Because I don't, I, I don't want to be... But let me get back to Jezebel. So, we're talking about that Jezebel used her power 
the wrong way. Now, bitch, I tell you, I didn't know that, man, I didn't know I had a Jezebel spirit in me. That's why it's so important to know your word. That's why it's so important to know your word. First Peter three and seven says husbands in the same way. Cause sometimes I'll be having some men watching me too. So let me talk to the men just for a couple of minutes. Husbands in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner, as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. I'm gonna say that last part again. Treat them with respect. Husbands, treat your wife with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Now, this point was, do not use your power for wrong. So men, if you treating your wife any kind of way, your prayers hitting the ceiling, buddy. They hitting that ceiling. They ain't going nowhere. God don't hear you because you are treating your wife wrong. You're supposed to treat her with respect. She's the weaker partner. And I don't necessarily mean that I mean you a weak woman. Please don't take that out of context. It's just that he's the man, you the woman. If you're not treating your wife right, your prayers are hitting the ceiling. You are not going to be blessed because God gave you favor. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor in the Lord. But you're treating your favor like crap. And you wonder why you can't get a job. And you wonder why everything going wrong for you. You wonder why you're not prospering. You see your wife, you, you see your wife, her, her business is on point. Or you see your wife, she getting her degree. You see your wife, she doing all these amazing things, but you can't even, every time you apply to people saying deny. Every time you trying to go get something, it's a problem. Y'all still prosper. Y'all still, y'all still holding on because God gonna make sure that y'all not gonna hit the ground. But you are not going to prosper as well because, and then soon God will move you out the way if you continue uh, doing what you do. When Samuel went and spoke to Saul, he had to tell Saul, you have been rejected as king because of your disobedience. Men, if you are disobedient, God will reject you as the head of the household. Move your butt on out the way. Ladies, you don't have to move nobody. God will move him for you. He'll make it so intense, he want to leave. You ain't got to do nothing but sit on your couch, cross your legs, go to work. Get your pedicure. Make sure you looking good. When he want to argue with you, I'm not going to argue with you. And keep it moving. It will make him uncomfortable because you're walking in the spirit. You're not walking in your flesh anymore. You walking in the spirit. And the spirit tells us there is a time to speak and there's a time to be quiet. So your, everything you don't have to speak on. Let God do the talking for you. Let God do the walking for you. You'll, next thing you know, you see the, your husband trouble. You see some, you ladies, we know when something wrong with them. We know when something going on with them, but you can't really help them. But your job is to pray for them because right now God got him in something that you can't help him with. Sometimes God put people in situations that you can't help them out of. I'm sorry. When I was younger, if my brother was in trouble, I'm not finna do nothing to get myself in trouble. So ladies, y'all need to learn that when you see God dealing with your husband, when you see God putting some act right on him, move out the way. Because if not, you going to get a whooping too. Move. First Thessalonians 5 and 15 says, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that unruly, 
comfort, I'm sorry, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14, I'm going to read it again. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. They say some men. They say just the men you like. It say be patient towards all. Patient. This, said, this point was don't abuse your power. How are you treating people that can't do anything for you? How are you treating people? Because I was always, I was told that you can tell a lot about a person when they have everything. You can tell a lot about them when they on top. How are you treating the people that are under you, the weak? Because Jezebel, she forced she was forcing the children of Israel to serve the God that she wanted them to serve. So how many of you in your households, you forcing your will on people? How many of you in your life, you forcing your will on, not God's will, your will on people? Well, I can't, well, 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 I, he not right for me because he don't do this, he don't do that. What does the Bible say about a good man? Not what attire expectations, not what mama, daddy, sister, cousin expectations are. What does the Bible say a good man looks like? And if that man checks the characteristics off of what the Bible says a good man is, let God do the rest. Number four, beware of revengeful spirits. Beware of revengeful spirits. People become unreasonable when their egos are hurt, regardless if they are wrong or not. Let me say that again. People will become unreasonable when their egos get hurt, whether they are wrong or not. Some people, as soon as somebody messes your little ego, you just go off. As soon as somebody don't make you feel good, you go off. You may be even wrong. Know you're wrong, but don't care you're wrong. It's my way or the highway. Look at you. You can't be that way. Jezebel was enraged and threatened by God and his prophets. She, she was so threatened that she ordered the killing of the prophets of God. That was how threatened she was. She felt scorned because of the refusal of that man, of him not selling the vineyard to her, that she got him killed. That's how lethal Jezebel was when you hurt her. She didn't care who you was. She'll cut you in a minute. Cut you down. I don't care if you're a child of God. I'm going to cut you down. You hurt my feelings. You hurt me. So now I'm going to get back at you. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm not going to give you my love. I'm not going to sleep with you. I'm not going to do nothing with you. That's revenge. And I told you the devil is slick. He be just waiting. You just be going and going. And, he, and the devil just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First Peter 2 and 23 says, we remember Christ who when they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. 
Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. First Peter 2 and 23. I'm going to say it one more time. We remember Christ who when they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Jesus knew he did not need to fight his battles. My daddy going to fight my battles for me. I'm good. He knew that even though every, they, they were after him, they were saying all these things, he, he knew he didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to argue with them. He didn't have to tell people what he, he didn't have to tell. Even when Satan came in the desert and tried to, uh, and tried to um, get Jesus to turn the water, I mean, turn the, uh, the rock into bread. I know you're hungry, Jesus. Turn it into bread. God, Jesus didn't argue with him. Y'all be arguing with people. Stop arguing. You don't need to keep explaining yourself to people. Say what you got to say and move on. But y'all be in an argument. And toxic people love to argue with you. They love arguing. So if you're sitting there arguing with them, yeah, you're going to have a problem. Let God fight your battles. If your husband's throwing insults at you, that's why I gave y'all. If your husband is throwing insults at you, step back. Look, you, I'm not going to allow you to talk to me like that. And you walk up out that room. Don't let someone sit there and abuse you. It is okay to, to protect your peace and walk away. If you got to get in your car and take a drive, do it. But do not sit there and take abuse. But I'm also telling you, do not sit there and argue and throw abuse back. When we are in the act and when we're pursuing revenge, we are trying to seek repro uh, reprobation for acts that somebody did to us personally. So your ego, your ego is bruised. So now you feel like that you got to hurt them. I got to get them back. That's pride. And God does not like a prideful heart. He does not like a prideful heart. By seeking and desiring revenge, we are placing ourselves in the position of God. Woo! A Woo! I know. By seeking and desiring revenge, you are placing yourself in the position of God. Because the Bible tells us that revenge is, is God's. So when you trying to seek revenge on somebody because they hurt you, you have now stepped out of being the servant and now you have stepped into being God. Because you you want revenge yourself. I'm going to get him back. I'm, I'm going to put this tracking device on him. He, I'm going to look at his phone. Uh, he going to come home, show me his phone, show me where he going. I, I want to know how many miles he, when he started. I'm going to calculate how many miles when he come back. You're doing all that extra stuff because you, you God. You God now, huh? You're going to control the whole situation. You're going to control this man now. You got the power to control him. So you're going to put all these things on him so you can control the situation. No wonder you hurting. No wonder you depressed. No wonder you down. No wonder you struggling. Because you have, you are in idolatry. You think you God. First Peter 3 and 9 says, do not repay evil with evil or insults with insults. On the contrary, repay evil with blessings. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. 
I tell you, why shouldn't I fight back with my husband? Why shouldn't I argue back with him? Why shouldn't I insult him back? Why do I got to sit there and deal with it? Why? I tell you, why, why, why? Because of 1 Peter 3 and 9. Do not repay evil with evil. Repay evil with blessings. So that you may inherit a blessing. How many of y'all want to be blessed? I want to be blessed. So I'm not going to let my husband stop me from getting my blessing. So when you, you look like two children. When you and your husband arguing with each other, you look like kids. Y'all just arguing. So mama come in and try to give you a, a present, but can't nobody get the present because both of y'all in trouble because you both was fighting. So now nobody getting nothing. You and your husband, y'all arguing with each other. He arguing with you. You arguing with him. God come in the room. What y'all doing? He trying to give you a blessing. And now he can't bless y'all because now he got to give y'all consequences. Now he got to whoop y'all. Because y'all disobedient. Man, y'all better learn how to use some hush mouth grace and learn how to be quiet. Use your silence. You can talk about me all you want, sir. God is listening. And he will get you better than I can. Because you ain't finna make me miss my blessing. I got a business I'm trying to grow. I got a ministry I'm trying to grow. I want to be a millionaire. There's so many things that women want to do. But you missing your blessings because you over there arguing with your husband. You doing evil for evil. Insults for insults. Tit for tat. You childish. The Bible says when much is given, much is required. So if you childish on a small level, how is God going to give you more? God said, man, you arguing with him in the parking lot. How am I going to give you a multi-million dollar business? You're going to be arguing with him in the boardroom. So I'm not going to give you nothing right now because you can't handle it. When you learn how to handle yourself in the parking lot, God will put you in the boardroom. But y'all looking crazy. So God can't bless you. You need to understand that God sees everything. I think that was my last point. That's my last point. I have four points for y'all. Let's run back. Let's run back through them real quick. We talking about Jezebel tonight. Those of you guys who are just joining me, please make sure you go back and watch this video when is when I am done, or please make sure you subscribe to YouTube. Everything will be posted in a minute. But Jezebel, so many ladies will tell me there ain't no Jezebel in me. Yes, it is. If you number one, beware of the sin of idolatry. Anybody, anything that is in front of your relationship with God, you have you are in the sin of idolatry. If you are a single woman and you everything you at the prayer call, you fasting, you doing everything for a man, but you're not doing it for God, you are in idolatry. If you can think you can change a person, you are in idolatry. Anything that makes you feel better than God, you are in idolatry. Sex, dr drugs, alcohol, men, anything, you are in idolatry. And if you're not even married and all your thoughts are about this thing, you're going you gonna to really be in the sin. You gonna, you're already in the sin of idolatry. It's going to get worse. You're going to lose yourself. That's why a lot of ladies lose themselves in their marriages. Because you already go in the marriage in the sin of idolatry. So when a man disappoints you, you are angry and upset. Not realizing he's a man. He going to do something. He ain't God. Now it's up to you to put the boundaries on what he can do. Number two. Do not use your good qualities for evil. Jezebel was a queen. She had leadership abilities. But instead of her using her leadership abilities to 
help the children of Israel. She used her leadership abilities to destroy the children of Israel. A lot of you ladies, you are strong, independent, mindful women. But if you get with a man and you don't lose that pride, you're going to break him down. God may give you a really good man. All he needs is a little love. He needs you to bring that feminine energy into his life. But because you're too masculine, because you don't know how to submit... You don't want to submit. Ain't nobody going to tell me what I'm going to do. I'm a grown woman. Then you not, you're going to use your qualities to destroy instead of build. I see billionaires. All they needed was a good woman in their life and took them all the way to the top. But you've also seen men get with bad women and take them all the way down to the bottom. So don't use your good qualities for evil. Number three. Don't use your power for wrong. You are the queen of your house. You are the, the, the co-owner of your life with your husband. So you have power too. Do not use your power to break him down with your mouth, with your attitude, with your nonverbal. Y'all know how we do. Don't do that. Don't use your power to destroy. Jezebel did her used her power to overpower her husband. Don't be breaking that man down because you think you can. I know he may be a little, little, little. He ain't, he ain't, he got, he needs some help stepping up. Build him up. Tell him his greatness. Baby, you are great. You got greatness in you. You may not see it, but I see it, my love. Come on. Let's build this life together. Let's build our businesses. Let's build our multi-millionaire. I know you can do it because I see it in you. Speak life. Don't use your power to break him down. Use your power to build him up. That's why you are his wife. You are a suitable helpmate for him. Number four and the last one was be aware of re revengeful spirits. Be aware. Be aware. That's one thing. Something else the Holy Ghost. See, the story of Jezebel. When Elijah came to Jezebel, well, came and, and, and uh, spoke a word to Ahab and told Ahab how they were going to die. How that Jezebel was, to be honest, when I read it, I was like, woo. They're going to be eaten by dogs. She's going to be eaten by dogs. That's how, that's what, that's how, how they say she was going to die. That was the prophecy that she was going to be ripped apart by dogs. And that actually happened. Well, her body was, she died, she would die, but her body was. So you got to understand that when you treat people wrong, don't think you won't get what's coming to you. Don't think that God is not paying attention. And you may be pointing your fingers at your husband. But you doing wrong too. And God sees you're wrong. So that's why you're having trouble in your marriage. That's why you're so troubled. Ladies, you can be reading your Bible every day. Going to church every day. You could be lifting your hands every day. You could be praying every day. But you still can be in the sin of idolatry. And that's what I need you guys to understand. Because this is one of the sins that you don't even know you're doing it. And that's why God put it on my heart to talk about this tonight. Because this is something, one of them sins that people don't know that they're doing it. And you are in hell in your marriage. You are in hell in your life. And you don't understand why. God, I'm doing everything you're telling me to do. But why am I still having to go through this? Well, ask yourself, are you committing the sin of idolatry? If you lost everything that you had right now, but Jesus, would you be okay? If you lost your house, if you lost your car, if your business fell apart, if your man decided to leave you, if your children just went AWOL and didn't want to be around you anymore, would you still be okay or would you break down? Because your heart is in things. Your heart is in people. Your heart needs to be in God. If your heart is not in God, if somebody leaves you, you're going to feel less than. But somebody who knows that they got God on their side, if a man leave them, bye. That means you wasn't for me. That means God about to send me somebody else. 
You, you pick yourself up and you make yourself look good and you go back out there. But if you are in idolatry and you so focused on marriage, I got to have that man. I got to have a man. I got to have a man. No, you don't. You do not have to have a man to be the bomb. Remember what I told you about Ruth. Remember when we talked about Ruth? Was Ruth at home waiting for Boaz? Was Ruth at the house saying, I'm, I'm going to get cute and wait for me a man to come rescue me? No. Ruth was working. Ruth was in the fields. Ruth was doing what she needed to do for her family. She was building. She was working. She was too busy. She wasn't waiting on no man. She was going out there and getting it herself. Then the Bible says that she just so happened to end up in Boaz's field. Ladies, if you're busy, if you're, doing what, if you're busy doing what God has told you to do, it just so happens you may end up in your Boaz field. But if you're so desperate for a man, you will take love from anybody. Anybody. And there are some married women that took love from anybody. They were so much, they wanted a man more than a woman. I mean, more than God. Sorry about that. They want a man more than they wanted God. I put a list on Facebook today about don't get married if you're selfish. Don't get married if you if you got addiction. Don't get married if you're if you got pride. Don't get married if you don't have a relationship with God. Blew our page all the way up because people were saying, well, when you get married, you know, my husband helped me with this. My husband helped me with that. Listen to what you guys are saying. My husband helped me with this. My husband he my husband got helped me get healed. When I got married, I was able to do better. When I got married, you're it's pretty much like you're telling single women that when they get married, that's when their lives will start. That when they get married, that their husbands will help them to change. Their husbands will be their saviors. Their husbands will be their healers. And that's not true. It's God. You get healed by God first. You get a relationship with God first. If you got an addiction, if you got all those things, it's a narcissist has mental problems, do have all these toxic behaviors and get with somebody. So many of, many of you that's telling people that you're telling women it's okay to be with a narcissist. No. If they got all, and those were some major issues I put on that list. If you didn't see the list, go to White Power's page. But those were some big issues I put on that list. And if you don't want to work on those and you think that getting in a marriage is going to fix them, how, shame on you. Because then you're going to flick all that pain and heartache on your mate. Now your mate is dealing with emotional abandonment because you didn't deal with your abandonment issues before you got married. You thought that getting married will fix it. It's not going to fix it. It's going to, it's going to reveal it. Many of you thought when I'm, if, if I marry him, he'll stop doing drugs. If I marry him, he'll stop drinking. If I marry him, he'll do this. If I give him a baby, he'll do this. You're not God. That is idolatry. So if you get married, already in the sin of idolatry now you are in the sin of idolatry in a marriage you start losing yourself you start letting him treat you any kind of way because you don't know who you are in god a woman that knows who she is with god and walks boldly with her father will not let you treat her any kind of way i'm a king's king i'm a king's kid you're not gonna treat me any kind of way but those of you who don't know who you are, you'll let people walk all over you because he's your God. That man is your God. You can't set no boundaries because you've made the man your God. You can't let the house go. You made the house your, your God. If the car breaks down, you going crazy. You made the car your God. When your kids acting up, your kids won't call you. Your kids won't come see you because you made them your God. God is everything that I need. And it took me a long time to get that way. But trust me, until I learned it, God was not letting wife power grow. 
until I learned that God was not letting me be comfortable to be able to speak. He was not giving me the anointing. He was not helping me until I did what I was supposed to do. Yeah, I tell you, your husband can do whatever he want to do. But I, I told you to do something. I don't care if he don't want to serve me. You better serve me. You better get up and do what I tell you to do. I will shut the whole world down on you. I'll shut him out on you. Your kids out. Everybody will turn their back on you because I want you to do what I tell you to do. You wonder why your husband is probably turning his back on you? How's your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? Are you, are you, if your man should, if your man leaves, you should be going to God. Or are you on your knees crying and begging, Lord, I'm nobody because he don't want to be with me. And God say, wait a minute, I'm still here. I love you. I got you. Why are you tripping? Come on, let's go. Come on, I got you. I gave you food, a life, you alive, you're breathing, your kids, everything's going right. You got a job, but because this man don't want you, you think you're nothing. Ladies, that's idolatry. So tonight, I want everyone, if your heart was convicted tonight, you need to get on your knees and you need to ask God to forgive you for the sin of idolatry. Because that 99% of the reason why most marriages fail is not because of cheating, of finances. It's because of idolatry. You put your money before God. You put your man before God. You put your children before God. You put your cars, your houses, everything before God. And God say, I shut it all down. You going to come to me one way or another. So be careful. Pray. Tell God, forgive me. You've been praying, but you ain't been asking God to forgive you for your idolatry. You haven't asked God to forgive you for your revengeful spirit, your Jezebel spirit. Pray tonight. Lord, bless me. Lord, forgive me. I repent for me. Cleanse me of this Jezebel spirit. The spirit of revenge, the spirit of manipulation, the spirit of control, the spirit of trying to, trying to hurt people. I want to be more like you. Use me, oh Lord. That's what you guys need to do tonight. Give it to God. Let God be God. You be you. You be your cute self. You working too hard, baby. That's why you stressed out. You working too hard. You doing too much. You carrying too much. You looking like the bag lady. You got all these bags. You gonna miss your bus. Y'all know the song. So what I need you guys to do tonight is thank God for being a wonderful God, but repent for your sins. So that God can go ahead and start doing what he's trying to do. Because you guys got to remember, you got to confess your sins. And sometimes you may be sinning and you don't even know you're doing. So today I brought to your attention idolatry, revenge. I brought some things to your attention. So you need to get in your prayers and you need to, you need to tell God, Lord, well, cleanse me from this, oh Lord. I don't want nothing to stop me. And you need to start getting your mind off your husband. And you need to start putting your mind on your relationship with God. Making sure that God feel good. Making sure that God feel like he the only man in your life. Making sure that God feel great. Some of you guys don't really, y'all be in prayer and y'all be praying about your husband. How do you think you would feel if you was on a date with your husband and all he did was talk about another woman? How, you, how would that make you feel, ladies, if the whole time you on a date with your man, he's talking about, but this woman did this, and this woman was that, and you know what, baby, she didn't want to do this, and she was like this, and baby, you just don't know, that girl is like this, and that girl is like that. You're going to look at her, you look at him and be like, excuse me? So that's how God feels when you praying to him, and all you praying about is your husband. That's all you praying about is your husband. And God's sitting there like, man, I ain't had no time with you in like two weeks. I just want to hear your voice. I just want to hear your, how your day going. What you been doing? I, I miss you. But the whole time you're talking to him about another man. So what would happen if your man was talking to you about somebody else? You would become jealous. 
That's how God feels when you are in your prayer closet, when you are in the prayer meetings, when you fasting for a man. But not just because he's a loving father, because you want to know him more. My prayer every day is, Lord, less of me, more of you. I want more of you. I don't care about things. I want more of you because you make me feel good. You make me whole. You make me feel like I can conquer the world. You, nobody else, they extra. They get to enjoy our relationship. That's what I be telling God. Lord, it's me and you. Everybody else gets to enjoy our relationship because we have a good relationship. Everybody else get the overflow of it. My man get the overflow. My kids get the overflow. My friends, my family, y'all on wipe out. Everybody get the overflow because I got a relationship with the best man in the world, and that's Jesus. When you being loved right, come on, ladies. When you being loved on right, don't it make you feel good? You at work and you just you just happy. You just feeling good. You walking. You got your little Beyonce walk going. You just hitting it. Cause he cause you feel good. Well, a man ain't gonna ever do that for you. A car, a job. No. They can add to it, but they'll never be able to be the source of it. That's Jesus. So please repent so that way God can come in and do what he wants you to do. You probably been losing the battle because you, you just full of nasty idolatry, revenge, you angry, unforgiveness. Let this stuff go so God can give you a good life and make you happy. Okay? Let's, let, let's leave Jezebel alone. Let's get away from Jezebel. Okay? So that was Jezebel tonight, y'all. I pray that this was a blessing. Like I said, this was going to be one of those messages where, and I went over a little bit of my time, but I wanted it to be, I wanted to, I didn't care about this one. I wanted the Holy Ghost to take over because I knew that even when I was listening, when I was re, when I was studying and when I was looking at the scriptures and I, I've been really enjoying this lesson with the ladies because I've been even learning some stuff myself. God's been convicting me, making me a better wife, a better, a better person, better leader, better boss through lessons with the ladies. So if it's been a blessing to me, I pray that it was a blessing to you. But let's leave our Jezebel spirits. You know, we talked about Delilah and her conniving ways and how she tried to do all kinds. She didn't respect boundaries. She didn't want none of that. So now we're talking about Jezebel and she, she, she abusing her power, putting her man, just all kinds of stuff. Let's not be like them. Let's not be rottenness to our husband's bones. Let's be crowns to their heads. And if they got, if they got some issue, go to God. God can handle it more than you can. If your husband is distanced from you, that's an opportunity for you to go to God and spend time with yourself. Look at a pedicure. You don't need to be so focused on him. That's idolatry. When you sitting in the room crying because he left, that's idolatry. Get up, go do something. So I pray that this was a blessing. If you, a um, couple of things before I get off. If you guys are looking for Christian counseling, I'm running a special right now where you get three months of, count, of coaching with me. So what that is, is that you get twice a month, you get a hour call with me. So for two, two times a month, we get an hour call. So for three months, so that's six calls. And usually my coaching packages are $100 a month. But for some reason, the Lord put it on my heart for the month of February was for me to open it up and do it for 150 for three months. So let me tell you, let me say that again. It's usually a hundred dollars a month, but until February 14th, because that's the last day, it will be three months for $150. So please, if you're interested in working with me as a coach, as a counselor, as a mentor, this is your opportunity to sign up uh, at a very low price because it will go back up. But the Lord always puts it on my heart time and time again. Bring it, bring it down. Because there's somebody out there that needs your help. Yes, ma'am. It is one-on-one. -on -one. My coaching calls are one-on-one -on -one between you and I and Jesus. Just one-on-one. -on -one. 
I used to couples counsel, but I don't do that no more. Unless it's premarital counseling. Now, if you are getting married, I do still do couples counseling. But married counseling, I've kind of strayed away from that because I'm opening up a new business. And next month, I'll be opening up a new business where I will. I, I am a certified chaplain. I've got my certification as a chaplain. So I am going to be doing weddings. I'm going to be officiating weddings all over the United States. So if you're getting married, hit your girl up because um, I will offer premarital counseling. And also, no matter where you want to get married, if you want to get married in Vegas, if you want to get married in Florida, if you want to get married in Arizona, wherever you want to get married, I am certified to marry you. So I will fly myself out there and we will get married. If you want to get married in the mountains, we can do it. So I have, I have kind of canceled my marriage counseling and I've just been doing premarital counseling, wife coaching and wife Christian counseling. So if you're a lady who needs services that would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, this is for you. Couples, not right now, but if you desperately need me, send me a message and we'll talk about it. Also, on uh, the last Saturday of this month, February tw February twenty seventh, I think it is. I will be having I will be having a master class on on uh, make love, not war. So in that master class, and it's already been sold out, ladies. So if you did not sign up for this master class, shame on you. But I will be having another one. The Lord's already put it on my heart to do it. But this master class is going to be teaching you, ladies about sex, intimacy, love languages, just anything to do with bringing back the passion in your marriage. This masterclass, I'm not holding any bars back. There's going to be a lot of biblical things going on, but I'm also going to tell you how to get your groove back, okay? The Bible tells us that married women need to be, we need to be knowledgeable of the world so that we can please our men. So in this masterclass, Miss Attire is going to teach you some stuff. Biblically, biblically. So it's going to be based on the word of God, but we're going to learn some things, how to love on yourself, how to love on your man, how, some dance. We, we're going to do it all because we, I want people to be helped in their marriages. Satan is, is hurting marriages too much. So if you did not sign up for this masterclass, be on the lookout because there will be another one. Love you guys. Thank y'all so much for the support of Wife Power. We reached 5,000 members in our group. We reached 55,000 on a Wife Power page. Keep sharing it. Keep sharing the videos. Keep sharing the posts. Get the word out there because a lot of people are doing marriage wrong. A lot of ladies are hurting. They're struggling. They don't understand what's going on. But with the message of wife power, with the ministry that God has given me to put to this world, this will get out. Y'all may not like some of the things I tell you, but I promise you it's in the word. Everything is being posted for you guys. I thank you guys so much. Like I say, for the support. Um, and I'm going to finish. I'm going to close us out with prayer. Heavenly father, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for this word, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the conviction that came with this word, Jesus. We don't know everything, God, but you, but you know everything that we need, Father. And I thank you for the message that you gave me today to help the women, Lord. There's so many women that are struggling in their marriages, Father. They're confused. They're lost. They're serving you. They're going to church. They're reading their Bible. They're, they're praying. They're doing everything, God, but they don't realize that their heart has been leaning towards something else and not you. Why do they pray? Why do they fast? Why are they in this ministry, God? Everything that we do should be for you. So God, I ask right now that every woman that is watching me, including myself, Jesus, we repent for the sin of idolatry, God. Forgive us for our sin of idolatry, Father. Forgive us for our need of revenge. Forgive us for trying to take your place, God. You are the only God. And it, we, are, we are nothing without you, God. Forgive us for putting our husbands, our kids, our, our, the doll, whatever it is, in front of you. Nothing should separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. 
Move in a mighty way for these ladies, God. Move for a, in a mighty way in their homes. Touch the head of their households. If their mouths have broken them down, God, I ask that you build up that man, Lord. You let that man know that he is your son and he is okay. Teach your women how to speak life into their husbands, God. Convict them every time they want to be negative to what? Convict them every time they want to walk, not in your peace, but in flesh. Let them know that they got to be in your peace in order for things to work, God. Lord, we love you. We thank you because you always on time for your word. We just thank you for being a wonderful father, a merciful God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in all things I ask. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, guys. Remember, this will be on YouTube later on, probably tomorrow, <laughs> because I'm tired. But um, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Heavenly Father, I thank God, number one. Thank you guys. Continue sharing the message of wife power. If you guys need me, you know how to reach me. Um, thank you for thank you to all my moderators and admins of the page. You guys have been amazing. Just making sure that that page is growing. I need your help. Miss Ira, Laura, thank you guys. I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for helping me. Um, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. We're going to be talking about Abigail. We're going to be talking about Miss Abigail on Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Abigail. I been, I, she was requested. And I said, you know what? I, I need to talk about her. Because there are a lot of women in her situation. So we're going to be talking about her on Tuesday, on Power Talk Tuesday. And on Power Talk Tuesday, I'm going to tell you guys who I'm going to talk about next Thursday. I'm not going to reveal it yet. But I'm going to talk about it up next Thursday. I'm going to tell you all on Tuesday. So Tuesday, we're going to be talking about Miss Abigail. So you guys have a wonderful weekend. Please be safe. If you are on the roads and you are, in, especially in Texas, please be safe. Stay warm. Don't forget, say your prayers. Be mindful. Stay of sober mind. Your enemy is always trying to get you. Watch out. Love you guys with the love of Christ. Have a blessed rest of your night. 